Hey there, my name is Crafty Kathy, and I am so happy and thankful that you came to spend your time to craft with me today. Let's jump on in. Sabby is introducing our first DIY of the day. In today's video, I'm going to show you some super easy DIYs that I make for just a couple of dollars. I think I might have about two dollars in this first one, but the rest of them I got supplies at one of those Amazon bin stores, and we're going to talk about that in just a minute. But first, I wanted to make a simple riser. I have this piece of scrap board, and it's one and a half inches thick and it's one foot long and now i did get these feet from hobby lobby and they were half off of 349 so that's like a dollar 75 and that's literally all i'm gonna have in this very first craft all i did was take this scrap piece of board outside and i sanded it down pretty good i just eyeballed where i wanted the feet at one in each corner I put a little E6000 on each one, and I put it down where I want it. I flipped it over and placed heavy objects on the riser and just left it alone overnight so that it would harden. The next morning when I came out, my riser was perfect and ready to go. So I put a little bit of antique Waverly wax in a little container. And I just added some water from my little water mister to make a stain. I added on my stain with a paintbrush, just very sloppily just added it on there and I didn't add a whole lot and I went right behind it with the baby wipe to kind of wipe off the excess and feather out that color to get it the way that I wanted it. Can you believe that we were going to throw this piece away? It was in the burn pile. It was just an old junk piece of wood and look what a beautiful piece of decor it's turning out to be. Another place that comes to mind where you can get free wood is places where they're building homes. They'll just give you their scraps. And also Lowe's will either give to you or deeply discount stuff that they consider destroyed, but it only has a few minor imperfections. Now you'll notice I went over the top one more time and I went a little bit more heavier on the feet and on the sides. And let me just take a quick moment to welcome you, especially if this is the first time you've ever been to my channel, but also if you're a returning subscriber. I'm tickled pink to have every one of y'all. After I got it the color that I really liked, I decided that I was just going to leave it alone and let it dry by itself. And I left it alone for an hour or two so it could soak up that stain. Now the top part wasn't totally dry and we need it to be. So I took my heat tool and I dried that part off because we're about to do one of my favorite things, which is decoupage, baby. I got this gorgeous decoupage paper from my friend Lori over at Milton's Daughter. Did you guys know that she sells other supplies besides paint and things like that? Just pretty much anything you need for crafting, Miss Lori has it. And I'm going to leave her link down below in case you guys need to go and get some supplies. Now, most of her stuff, she gives my viewers 10% off if you use the code CRAFTYCATHY10. But with the decoupage papers and the paint, the distributors don't let them discount these. So she's not able to do it on these decoupage papers. But they're so cheap, they're just a couple dollars a piece and well worth it. I basically just laid it out because I only want it on the top and I used my fingers to kind of press it down so I could see where I needed to cut to get closest to the sides around that little riser. I just cut it out where I had pressed it and then I'm just going to lay it down and make sure that my position is exactly where I want it and get ready to do a little decoupaging. So I'm going to use my DIY liquid patina which is pretty much a lot like Mod Podge. It's just a little bit thinner and I like it a lot better. And I put a little bit of a thicker coat than I normally do because on the decoupage papers, you want to make sure that it's going to hold on there and get a good grip. And you can always pick these decoupage papers up and move them, unlike a napkin. You know how easy a napkin can rip. Well, decoupage papers and rice papers don't rip as easy. And guess what, guys? You don't get wrinkles. So, I mean, they are well worth a couple of dollars that I spend for each one. 
When it was good and dry, I just went around it with one of the sanding sponges from the Dollar Tree. I'm doing that to just get that little excess that's kind of hanging over the side because remember, I only want this on the very top portion. I also very, very lightly went over the very top so I could give it a more old and vintagey look. And then when I was finished with all this, I'm going to seal the entire piece in with Big Top by DIY Paint. So counting the decoupage paper and all, I have right under $5 in this DIY. And I plan to sell it between $18 and $22 in my booth. Let me know what you think about this first one. I love it. Guess everything's just right But I'll be wishing you were here with me Everywhere I go is crisp With DIY number two, I'm going to start out with this old crate that I've had for a long time. I got it at a thrift store years ago for only a dollar. Now the paper's peeling off of it and it looks really rough, so I took it outside and sanded that paper down to where it was just barely anything left. And I just spray painted it with two coats of just my white Rust-Oleum Ultra Matte times two. And then I just kind of lightly sanded it back over to get out any imperfections. I'm going to use some stencils that I got last year off of Amazon. I always get the ones that are 12 by 12 because they're just easier to make signs with. And here's the one that I picked to go on this crate. It says fresh cut Christmas trees, holiday greens, cut and carry, pine, spruce, and fir. Now, I don't think I used this one at all last year because it still looked brand new. And the only part that I can fit on the side is that part that says cut and carry and the picture of the Christmas trees. So I've got my DIY paint in gypsy green, which is my favorite green color. And I have my favorite little stencil brush. It's my favorite one. I use it every time. It's important to have a good stencil brush and I'm just gonna do my trees green. I like to use my DIY paint when I'm stenciling because it's clay based and because it's thick so you don't get any bleed through if any at all. And if you just have just a very little bit on your brush and you do this pouncing motion, just tap, 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 then you're not going to get any bleed through. Now the part that says cut and carry, I just did that with my rich black and it is by home decor it's a folk art brand that you can get at walmart i really like this black color it's like dark and almost velvety this is what i'm actually using for the front of the crate and on the side of the crate where it has the two little slats at the top part i'm going to put in the gypsy green holiday greens and then in black, I'm going to do the words pine, spruce, and fir on the little slat underneath that. I went to one of those Amazon bin stores this past week, and I got there on their dollar day. I found each of these trees for a dollar apiece. They originally came from the Target dollar spot for $5 a piece. Now, I'm not sure why these were in the Amazon bins, but I noticed several things from Target in there, so I think they got last year's Christmas leftovers. And, hey, I'll take it for a dollar a piece because these are gorgeous trees, and they're flocked, and they're really pretty. Now, these Amazon bin stores are popping up everywhere. I noticed that Do It On A Dime did a story about them the other day. They have like, they start off on one day where it's like a certain price and each day the price goes down and it's new inventory every week. So you could either pay somewhere between 
14 to $7 on your first day and then go all the way down to like 25 cents on your last day. At my store, there's nothing over $7 and it goes down to 25 cents. So I got there on the dollar day and I was very happy to find these two trees. They were the last two they had or I would have purchased more. So I just put a little bit of hot glue down and I'm going to stick my trees down so that they hold one kind of front and one in the back, almost kind of catty corner where you can still see both of them. I am so happy that I stopped in on that store the other day. I mean, something just told me to stop in and give it a go for a minute and just kind of look around and I am so glad I did. I had to fluff the trees out a little bit because they were in bags. And then I took two of these little pre-made bows that I get from Walmart. They're the black and white buffalo check. And I'm just going to put two little black buttons, one in the middle of each one. And I'm just simply going to use the back of these. It's like a bread tie. And I'm just going to tie it around the very top of the tree and twist it one or two times and then cut off the remainder with my pliers. Then I took some white pillow stuffing that I had, and it's actually like down feathers and stuffing. I didn't have any of the fluff that, you know, the fake snow stuff, so I use this. It's just as good, and I put it down in the bottom, and then I'm just going to take one of my picks that I got from Walmart, and I, first I put down a couple little pine cones in there. Then I take the little pick that I got from Walmart. It was $1.28. I kind of put it a little caddy corner in the side. And then look at this cute little reindeer I got for 98 cents at Walmart. I'm going to set him right up on the top and I'm actually going to glue him down by his little feet so he will stand up on the side of the box. It had a little wire underneath it right in the very center and with the little gentle pull, I pulled that right off. And then I'm going to take some Mod Podge. All I had was gloss, but that'll be fine. It doesn't matter. And I'm going to put it underneath the reindeer and add fake snow from Dollar Tree to make it look like he's standing in the snow. And I like that so well. I ran it all the way along that rail where his feet are at. I also added a little bit of Mod Podge in different spots on these trees, and I sprinkled fine white and clear glitter over the top of it just so when it hits the light in a certain way it's going to look like snow glistening it's very little i got this ornament from walmart in a pack of like 12 for i think three dollars or something and it's silver bells or it's actually bells and i painted it silver and then i have this little snowflake that came from the dollar tree and i painted it silver and I put a little bit of the Mod Podge and the glitter on those also. At Christmas, you can never have enough glitter. Then I'm taking some of these small berries. They're the little red berries that came from the Dollar Tree. And I just clip the little wires off the back of them. And I'm simply just going to glue them just here and there on both of the trees. So I only have $3 in this DIY. If you count up all the little embellishments, maybe $3.25 or $3.50. And I plan to sell this for at least $20, probably more around $24. Let me know what you think about this one. For the last DIY, I'm going to use this canvas print. I got it at a yard sale for only a dollar. It's probably about a 16 by 20, but it may be just a hair bit smaller. I needed the front part to be white, and I was in a hurry, so I just took it outside and used my Rust-Oleum Times 2 matte white, and I gave it a couple coats. And the frame part was originally kind of a golden color, 
and I don't do any gold much at all. So I used the rich black and went over the frame with two coats. I'm going to use those same Christmas stencils that I was telling you that I had from last year. This one says Jingle All the Way. And for the word Jingle, I'm going to go over the top of the frame. And I'm going to use my Imperial Red by Home Decor. And here I'm just using one of my extra little stencil brushes. And just in case you want to know which ones of these stencils that I have, I've got them in my Amazon store under stencils. Then down the left hand side of the canvas, I'm going to do the words all the way in that rich black color and I'm using that same stencil brush. At the Amazon bin store, I found this deer head and this actually was from Hobby Lobby and it had $5 on it or $4.99 was the price on it. But of course I got it for just a dollar and I'm painting it that rich black color. So I suppose that this little Amazon store that I went to had Amazon leftover stuff, but they also buy out stores if they don't sell all their product. I took three of those wood rounds that come from the Dollar Tree that come out in the fall, and I'm just very quickly painting the sides of these with the rich black color. And then I'm going to take those and I'm going to glue them to the back of this deer, the three of those, because I want my deer to stick out from this sign and be 3D. So then I'm going to just glue him down right under the word jingle. I took a pick that I got from Walmart for $1.28. Well, first I stuck down this little piece of cedar and it's just a scrap and then the little pick that was $1.28 from the Walmart. And I glued them down, but they're also going in between those little wood rounds, so they will be held really good. I took one of my little pre-made bows that I got from Walmart, and I already had a button on it because I was going to use it for a different DIY, but I never did finish that DIY, so this is perfect for his little bow tie. I think at most I have about $2 in this one, and I plan to sell it for $24 in my store. So let me know what you think about this one and if you like it. I hope you guys got some value out of today's content, and it helped you to see some different ways that you can think outside the box to keep the cost of your DIYs down, especially if you're reselling them because you can make better profit that way. So don't forget to join me on Tuesdays and Fridays at 6.30, that's when I'm doing my Christmas videos every week. And don't forget to subscribe. I would love to have you as part of my family. And if you would, hit that like button because it really helps me out on YouTube. It pushes me out there in front of other people that haven't had the chance to see me yet. And it really helps out my channel. So I love you guys so much and I will see you Friday with a good video. God bless you and your family.